Good evening. Tonight is Tuesday, January 9th, 2018. I'd like to call the Fitchburg City Council to order. Councilor Boschman, would you please lead us in the salute to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you please conduct the roll call? President Kushmarek. Present. Councilor Boschman. Present. Councilor Clark. Here. Councilor Di Natale. Here. Councilor Fleming. Here. Councilor Green. Present. Councilor Caddy. Here. Councilor Squalia. Present. Councilor Walsh. Present. Councilor Zarella. Here. <coughs> Uh, just a note to those uh, in the audience here this evening uh, and anyone speaking, uh, Fitchburg uh, Access Television is uh, live recording and, um, and broadcasting um, this evening. I'd also ask anyone uh, in the audience if they are video or audio recording at this time, if they could identify themselves by name. And your name, please. Is there anyone else as well? Neil Delfeld. Uh, sorry, your last name? Neil Delfeld. Uh, public forum. Anyone wishing to speak on any matter on the agenda may do so for not more than two minutes. If you're addressing public hearing petitions, you'll have an opportunity to speak at that time. Please approach the center table and identify yourself by name and address for the record and the item number on the agenda which you uh, are addressing. Um, I know we have a number of people looking to speak to City Hall this evening. Before we do so, I want to ask anyone who's wishing to speak to an item other than City Hall uh, to start. Is there anyone here this evening wi wishing to speak on the agenda? To Good evening. If you'd kindly approach the center table and identify yourself by name and address. My name is Quentin Pittman, 210 High Street. I'm here to speak on the behalf of the, uh, the uh, fourth ward and about the speeding and traffic analysis. Council, right. that's petition uh, 0918. Correct. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. Trustee? No, it's okay. Oh, okay. So, first and foremost, um, I would like to thank Councillor Kushmerick. He uh, attended a city meeting that we had, or a community meeting that we had, to speak about the speeding that we are seeing increase on High Street. And so, we are in full support as a neighborhood to see this analysis go forward, bring forward, because we, I mean, who doesn't want to see their streets protected? their children especially protected, especially when the warmer months come and they're outside. And so we're really looking forward to uh, this analysis going forward. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you. And I just, my name is Meredith Garrity. Um, I work for Newview Communities on 470 Main Street, and I am speaking on behalf of several residents who couldn't be here tonight who also want to voice their support um, and their appreciation for putting the petition through. So thank you very much. You're very welcome, and that uh, that petition will be referred to the uh, the next public safety committee uh, meeting. Wonderful. Is there anyone else speaking uh, to something other than City Hall this evening? Hi, uh, my name is Michelle Adamu, and um, I live at 11 Dumas Street in Fitchburg. Um, I've been a resident in the city of Fitchburg for the past 16 years, um, and I'm speaking to item 005-18 um, regarding the uh, Crocker Elementary School. Um, I am a parent of a student who attends there. My son Isaiah is in the fourth grade there. Um, and I did receive email communications um, regarding the school building and the things that occurred. Um, we did not get any real details on the items or anything other than uh, I guess there was asbestos in the building. Um, so my biggest concern is these funds that's being allocated are the teachers going to get any of those funds to help recoup all of the items that they've lost? You have teachers that have been teaching 10, 15, 20 years, and they've invested a lot in their classroom. My son particularly was a little hurt that all the pictures that his teacher had on the wall in the classroom are no longer there. And she doesn't have the funds to do that because her husband actually got laid off right at the beginning of this new fiscal year. So are those things being considered when we're looking at the dollar amount? Um, and was there any type of insurance that could help these teachers? That's my concern. Because the livelihood of the classroom and the appealing of the pictures on the wall and the library books and everything like that are concerns that my son actually was just voicing today at his second day at St. Anthony. 
I, this will be referred to the uh, the finance committee, so this will be held on next uh, Tuesday at 6 p.m., and you'll get, this will be uh, a meeting. There'll be one of two items on the agenda that'll address that in particular, but I can tell you, you know, uh, there are discussions regarding insurance uh, in addition to, to this individual order. Okay, and is that finance committee open also? Yes, it is. Okay, where will that be held at? Uh, same same room, uh, 6 o'clock next right. Tuesday. Can I speak Thank to that at all? I, counselor, unfortunately, we can't. We uh, counselors can't address the public uh, during the public forum. I'm sorry. Um, did you? Could I get you to spell your last name? Oh yeah, A U as in David, A M as in Mary, U umbrella. Is there anyone else wishing to speak to something other than City Hall this evening? <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> I'm Jean Labelle Pierce. I'm speaking um, in favor of. 005-18 um, and just to clarify this is the first step in a process I, I am a member of the school committee in this city um, and this is the first step in the process of um, looking into plans in order to really um, address some of the issues that we've seen play out this past week of the school buildings um, and so this is a, if, if people have other questions, they can certainly talk to me about that um, and to other members of the school committee. My email address is jeanlabellepierce at gmail.com. Uh, uh, and members of the school committee would be happy to talk to people about those kinds of questions. I know this is going to committee and we'll be talking about it more. But I just wanted to clarify for people that this is the beginning of hopefully um, school renovations. Um, and this is 80% reimbursed. The reason we go through MSBA is because it's an 80% reimbursable um, expenditure. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Ms. Craigan. Good evening. Uh, good evening, counselors, and good evening, members of the public. Um, I don't have, my name is Sally Craigan. I live at 1138 Oak Hill Road in Fitchburg and I serve on the school committee. I was a member of the, I was a founding member of the Building Needs Subcommittee, which we have had for our Fitchburg School Committee for, since 2008. We did not have a committee solely devoted to our building needs prior to that. So I just want to concur what uh, Ms. Uh, LaBelle Pierce said about our support for um, that, um, uh, that request um, for, um, for funding to do the plans. Um, I, I know we have two new members on our city council with ample experience on the school committee and other members on the city council who have served on school committee. So we really appreciate the support you do give our schools and we appreciate you know, all that you do to help support what we're doing because this is unprecedented. This is an <coughs> unprecedented weather event and I know that our teachers have done an amazing job and our kids too because I've talked to some kids from Crocker um, at going with it. But you know what, when the times are tough, Fitchburg rises up, so thank you. Thank you. Is there any, anyone else here tonight wishing to speak to something other than City Hall? All right, that said, I would now entertain uh, any members of the public who are here wishing to speak um, to, uh, to any of the, uh, the petitions or the orders that are referring to City Hall. Um, I'd remind you again to approach the center table, identify yourself by name and address for the record. You'll have two minutes to, uh, to speak to that uh, item. Um, and just a reminder to counselors, it was a good question earlier. This is a public forum. Um, this is an opportunity for the public to address us, um, but we cannot uh, reply directly back um, uh, or engage in deliberation or debate with members of the public. That's it. Good evening, sir. Hi, I'm Neil Delfeld. I live at 21 Gale Street in Fitchburg. And the first thing I'd, point th I'd like to make is that um, Councilor Zarella. Uh, there is a concern I have of conflict of interest. Your father owns um, research associates and you're employed by them. He's expressed that he's going to gain financially from that. So I ask that you file a um, conflict of interest report with um, the State Ethics Commission and also to recuse yourself from any voting or deliberation. The second point um, I'd like to make is that businesses I believe account for 23% of the total tax levy at this point. And with the equalization of the tax rate, they're going to account for, I think, around 15%. Um, Councilor DiNatale will probably correct me, and I don't mind the correction. But after the equalization of the tax rate, they're going to have a far less impact on the amount paid to pay for City Hall. 
With that in mind, uh, we've been hearing a lot about City Hall's advantages to businesses from businesses. You really have to consider the people. We're paying 77% right now for taxes, and by the time 2019 rolls around, it'll probably be closer to 83, maybe even 88, depending on the impact of the businesses that are leaving. Um, it's something to consider that uh, we can, um, I'm sorry, the, uh, let me back up a sec. This is our money that you're spending. This is uh, the citizens' money, homeowners. This is where it's coming from. It's not coming from businesses primarily. So I would like to hear you uh, more input from homeowners, more input from the citizens who are going to be affected by this. With the recent reassessment of property and, re and the tax rate shifting, um, we've seen a $354 increase in the last two years per property, that's an average, per property for, um, for homeowners. And that's going to do nothing but go up. Uh, with the reassessment, I believe I've heard people say um, $500 and $700 have increased this year, and it's going to double again by the time the tax rate equals out. Um, so you really have to consider that this is those people's money you're spending, not the business's money. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak at this time? <coughs> Good evening. <coughs> My name is Dave Basilio, and I live at 11 Fitch Hill Ave in Fitchburg. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Fitchburg, and um, I'm in favor of the City Hall project um, because I was on the original um, City Hall subcommittee when they first closed it down, and I know the building very well. I'm a contractor for over 40 years, and I believe it's worth renovating, and I think it should be on Main Street because we need a City Hall on Main Street. Main Street is dying, and the college is going to do the project across the street, and doing business in Fitchburg rots. If you're going to pull a building permit, if you're going to try to do any remodeling, it's hard to get to maneuver around City Hall the way it is. I think Main Street needs a City Hall there in Fitchburg. And I'm also on the Capital Improvements Commission, and I've just been appointed to the um, Housing Authority. Um, so I'm really involved, and I'm in favor of it. <coughs> Any questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Evening. Hi. Um, excuse me, Bob. Uh, Kelly Johnson, 168 Charles Street. Um, I am here uh, to oppose the City Hall uh, um, appropriation of funds. And I'd like to think of it, I'd like to think of uh, the City of Fitchburg as a family unit. Uh, here we work together, uh, we cohabitate, we we feel the pressures when things don't work for some of us, when things do work for others. Uh, maybe we're not in a comfortable situation. However, we have to make sacrifices together. Um, in a family unit, you know, sometimes people don't necessarily agree of what's best of what's going on and what our future brings, but uh, in a family unit, you also have to remember that when money is spent, it has to be spent on the immediate needs uh, and what is going to benefit in, in a short term, as well as thinking about how can we save for the long term. Uh, I'd like to note that not a lot of people who are here tonight are necessarily <coughs> going to speak, so maybe if we can get a show of hands of those who are not in favor of the City Hall appropriation, uh, I think that would... Right there! I think that would... Um, <laughs> nope, you will speak. Um, I, I think that just shows a definition of, of the support that, that we need to think about other things in the city right now rather than $24 million. Uh, the city council talks about how we have uh, debts that, um, excuse me, I can't think of what it's called, but we, we don't have the ability to pay for our long-term debts. We don't have the ability to pay for our benefits for those who will retire. Uh, this is constantly brought up within the past few years. So while you're discussing all of these things and then you go ahead and uh, maybe you've never been poor in your life, but you know what? When you're poor, you think about in my long-term, 
how am I going to best spend my money today? And the City Hall project, while eventually it will be a wonderful project and I look forward to that building uh, being renovated and, and being occupied and being a part of the downtown, today it is not what we need to be focusing on, uh, especially with so many things going on that we are all very aware of and that we need to think about uh, funding. So while I speak again of the family unit, you do not renovate a kitchen while the roof is leaking. Thank you. Yeah! Good evening. Good evening. Hi, my name is Linda Byrne. I live at 546 Blossom Street in Fitchburg. I've been a lifelong resident here. I was a city councilor. Congratulations, by the way, because we had three women when I first started, so that's nice. All right. Anyway, <laughs> the, um, I have been committed to the city of Fitchburg for years and years. I've served on boards, and I'm not talking about this to be a braggart about anything, but because my heart is in Fitchburg, I've been with the Fitchburg State College on the Board of Trustees, the Alumni Association. I, as I told you, I've been on the City Council. I've worked on several committees throughout this time that I've been in Fitchburg. I'm so familiar with the city, fighting for trees. But I just believe heart and soul in the city of Fitchburg. And I have to tell you, we need a respectable place to do business. You can't be working out of a warehouse. I went, this year I happened to work on early voting. And I went down and sat in the front room there and I had set everything up. And in order to go to the ladies room, you have to walk through all these boxes and all, the mayor's office is tucked back someplace, you know, in a mystery. I mean, it is really not a very uh, what, what's a respectable place to be doing business. If we want people to come to the city of Fitchburg and say, we've got our act together, then we need to have a place that looks respectable and in, in together. I, I got, we've gone, my husband and I have traveled a lot, and one of the key things is to drive by city halls in various cities and countries, and they'll highlight. So recently, it was city hall. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, gorgeous, gorgeous building. There's a great deal of pride in a city that has a respectable business place from which to operate. And we need that. Now, what um, Kelly just said, it's not gonna happen today. This is a long range project. And that's what we have to think in terms of, this is a long range project, let's move it forward. We can't just be sitting here saying that we as a city can't afford to do this and can't afford to do that. Think bigger. I'm, okay, yeah. thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mrs. Byrne. Good evening. And just before you get started, I'd just like to remind uh, those in the, uh, the audience here this evening that when someone's addressing the council, I just ask for, for everyone else to give their respect and allow them the opportunity to speak um, w without others speaking behind them. That's it. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Glenda Cologne. I live in 21 Hale Street in Fitchburg, and I'm a par parent. I, I, I don't know all the professional language, but I'm a parent speaking up for my kids. I have three kids in Long Joe Middle School, and y'all worried about City Hall while my kid's roof is falling on them. My kid is going back to school tomorrow, me not knowing if um, there's heat in the, in the um in the school, so I don't think it's fair that y'all sit in here worrying about other things other than our future. Our kids are our future. So my kid is sitting at home right now, mommy, be careful what you're gonna say. My heart is pounding because I vote. So my voice needs to be heard. And when I found out this was gonna happen, I said, this is the time. Your mother-in-law is my neighbor and I've seen you. I had to move my cars and I had to pay over a thousand dollars to get them out of the sidewalk or my 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 the, the place I pay for because I pay a thousand dollars I work I pay taxes I'm not on state it's hard it, we're, we're parents we're struggling and y'all worrying about simple things when our schools are falling on our kids roof and this is not now it's not the storm this school has been wasn't it the high school before? 
right? Is City Hall, do you have? Do you guys have buckets? Did you guys have to leave a section because you don't know when the roof is gonna fall? Did you guys have to, really? Do you consider our future? Y'all so worried about other things. Like, yeah, let's think about our kids. I'm teaching my kids how to be better, but then they're seeing that no one cares about them. Cause we, we, we ain't got a voice. We ain't got a voice because we're not up there like you guys are. And I don't think it's fair. So, I, like, I don't even know if I make sense right now, but I don't care. I just, I'm here because this needs to stop. Y'all, y'all worrying about other stuff. And just like she said, family. Y'all family is good. My family is struggling. All right? And I work. We don't qualify for all these assistance because we make $2. We go over the budget for $2. And y'all worrying about other things? Y'all got food in your house? Y'all set. Your, your bills are paid, not mine. I'm a struggling parent, and y'all worried about spending $24 million. When I, gotta, when I live off $1,000 a week, $1,300 a week, and I got to pay $1,000 a month, so I just don't think it's fair, and I'm here tell you guys stop wasting your money on stuff that's not necessary fix our kids school because y'all quick to call us because y'all not sending your kid to school but is it really worth it would you send your kid to school not knowing that you're going to get a phone call that something happened Ms. and Columbia, yeah my time is running out your time is but yes i'm I, i'm here to say what i gotta say thank you and i'm done and i'm leaving thank you Good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Pooler. I reside at 167 Blossom Street. Earlier today, I sent an email to the entire city council. I received one in-depth response. That in-depth response, in my mind, was complete and utter nonsense. The amount of money that was stated was spent on schools averaged approximately $575,000 a year. This does not fix our schools. If we are that interested in our schools and our kids, which are, which are the future of not only Fitchburg, the state of Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and the United States, mm -hmm. then, what, then what do we look at? Another question that I, was asked, that I asked was totally skirted around. That question was, and still is, what kind of a written plan, A, B, C, D plan, do, uh, does, the, uh, does, uh, does the city have to regen, uh, rejuvenate Main Street? I walked today, today I walked personally up and down Main Street from where, where Main Street goes around the boulder up to where Main Street meets Lunenburg on uh, Summer Street. I counted 50 empty storefronts. Out of, out of the storefronts that had businesses in them, it were occupied businesses, there are four churches and two churches that occupy storefronts. These buildings, these churches do not pay taxes to the city of Fitchburg. There is the ARC, which is, a, which is another organization that does not pay taxes to the city of Fitchburg. What is the plan? Okay, I don't wanna hear we have projections. We need a plan here in Fitchburg to bring back and rejuvenate Main Street. It can flourish. So your time is about to elapse. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Good evening uh, Mr. President, Your Honor, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the council. My name is Robert O'Brien. I live at 114 Bishop Road. Uh, and I'm the gentleman that recently filed a complaint against the city council 
when you tried to ban the use of cell phones in public meetings. So I would like to address that, and this goes directly to... Sir, that's, that's not on the agenda this evening. Oh, no, but it, it goes directly to it, sir, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that I, I have the right to say this. I, as long as it, it's listed on the agenda, you may speak to it. So if you could just reference the item number on the agenda which you're are speaking to. I, I believe it does, sir. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society, and we as a people inherently and historically are opposed to secret societies. So this does not appear oaths. on tonight's agenda. It will appear on the next city council agenda, so that's uh, the following Tuesday. Uh, so not, well, okay not then, sir. The following. You may address it at that time. So if you would like to narrowly define what I am allowed to speak about tonight, is it the city hall that, that is appropriation? Fair yes, sir. Okay. This is fraud, waste, and abuse. This is just shy of a RICO case. You are familiar with the term RICO? I believe you were trained as an attorney. Is that correct, sir? I'm not an attorney. You're familiar with the term RICO, are you not, sir? This is just shy of a RICO case. This city cannot afford this. I believe that this city has manipulated the books to unfairly, unethically, reflect an EQV that is equalized value to indicate that they are worth more than they should be allowed to borrow. Further, they have portrayed to the public that they are allowed to borrow more than they are. It is all smoke and mirrors. And every single city councilor that votes yes will be voted out of office or will be indicted. I would have preferred to read what I wanted to read, sir, but you wanted to have a narrow scope. I have given you what you wanted, and I think that I've gone under my two minutes, sir. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak at this time? I would have stuck with the script. Good evening. I'm Tony Robinson. I live on High Street. Um, I don't mean disrespect to anyone who wants to spend the money on City Hall, but I have children that go to Crocker and one that should have went to Longshore but is not at this time. I don't understand how walking around boxes or the prettiness of a building can be more important than the safety of our children. We expect the kids to go to school not knowing that there's asbestos, even though I know nobody really foresaw that. But everyone knew there was holes in the building at Longjo that rooms didn't have heat and things like that. But you want to spend lots and lots of money to make a building pretty that isn't necessarily need to. You want people to come here to get businesses on Main Street, but those people will have families. They're going to want their children to be able to go to a safe school. And if you spend all the money making a building pretty so that it is making Main Street look nicer and it's more convenient for people who have to do voting, you, they're not going to want to move here. I don't want to put my kids in a school where they're not safe. That, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak this time? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Rebecca Wilkerson. I live at 20 Ellis Street. Um, I moved to Fitchburg three years ago, bought my house sight unseen from Colorado, packed up and moved across the country. Um, as much as I read online, I believed in the city so we invested here. My child now uh, is attending preschool at McKay, and we haven't had to deal with the school issues that other parents have faced, but it's approaching. He's in preschool. Um, it's hard to believe in a city when the city itself doesn't believe in it and invest in the future. Um, you know, as quick as we moved here and as quick as we bought our house, we're now discussing plans to renovate and pack up and sell because of the schooling. Um, I don't want to send my child to a school that is leaking or where they have to wear blankets to stay warm. That's not fair to the kids, certainly not fair to the teachers. Um, I want to be here. I want to be in Fitchburg. I want to support the city. 
but I want the city to support the people as well. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dylan McLean. I live on 35 Colony Road, and I'm a recent college, college graduate, and I grew up here. I actually went to middle school here. This is my first Fitchburg public school from Gardner and uh, private schools previously. And I have to say this building's come very far over the years, um, thinking that I wanted to leave here at one point. And it looks much better now. And it might also be the only school currently operating fluently. Um, but when I think about the city hall and the plans, I, I do want to strongly oppose, oppose the idea and um, city hall. But I, but I do, you know, I'm, I just went to business school and I'm thinking about what I want to do with my life, my career. And of course, I work right now in one of the nicest buildings, I'd say, on Main Street. And I oversee all the views and I absolutely love it. Um, and I, and I love the city. So I could definitely see why you guys would want to invest in something like yourselves and in the city that's going to dominantly promote this. But what, what I understand is being proposed is that this, this building, um, that is also currently next to a building that we were given. And I believe we might be acquiring or buying some sort of thing about the campus. There might be a third building, maybe the one behind Bank of America. And I think that that'd be a great spot to start off with. And propose and maybe you know at a year we we come back to this and see what we can do uh, bank of america would make a great uh, facility for the mayor's office you know directly having meetings the formal stuff i understand that business is formal and that we all you know everything is nicely done here nothing needs to be this formal we're all regular people but we do need to set those precedences that we are an elaborate city that can do business in um but when I think of that, and I think of, I went to school here, my brother, he's 10 years younger than I am, so he's currently going to school in the Fitchburg Public Schools, and he um, went to Fitchburg High after I you know, highly suggested all the benefits of Monty Tech and how much better they you know, just treated their facility. I um, just want to wrap things up. I quickly you know, drove over to a school the other day, and Fitchburg High is a great big facility. It's gorgeous, but I don't think it's been power wash or maintenance anything outside. And that just leads me to all the other maintenance issues um, that go with the school. And I think that we need a beautiful building, but now's not the time. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else we should get this time? Good evening. <coughs> My name is Jennifer Knight. I live at 10 Bond Street. 10 years ago, we decertified the library because we couldn't keep it in the budget. The library is my home, but it is also the resources for many, many people in this town, not just the children. And when I understand that money that was promised to the library is being taken and appropriated for this city hall, it makes me so angry. I was there the first time the budget was cut. I will. I volunteered at the library. I marched in the parade and held the hat. I do not think that we need this building beyond our children and the people who need these resources. Because I do think that the schools have been in disrepair for years. I fought to get my daughter out of Longstow three years ago. And now she's in the Gateway program. And I am glad that she is out of those buildings. My other daughter went to the Sizer School. It's a brand new building, so I didn't have to worry about her either. But if, she, if they had to stay in Long's Joe, I would have done whatever I could to get them out because back then we knew about these problems. Please reconsider, as the lady before me spoke, when you live within a budget, you cannot always go with what you want, but you gotta go with what you need. We need schools. We need these resources from the library. We do not need a fancy rehab city hall. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Is there anyone else wishing to speak at this time? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Fred Benoit, and I live at 64 Hartford Street. Um, I'm a lifelong resident of Fitchburg as well. I went to. McKay, I went to BF, I went to Monty Tech, so I've got a little mix of all the buildings here. Um, I'd like to say that I, I strongly oppose um, finance 
order 34-18 and um, at the very least um, wish that you go along with the petition um, 8-18 to give the new counselors some time I mean what have they been on the job a week and we're talking about a big ticket item here um, there's no rush to spend this money as far as I know it's not use it or lose it type situation there's nothing wrong with taking a pause on that I mean we're all sitting here tonight in a nice warm building protected from the elements you're nice and warm and protected from the elements on Boulder Drive there's no rush to move out of there. There's plenty of room to expand over there. And I think the space over there, you're underutilizing it. So I would just like to say, you know, there's no big rush. Let's take our time about this and try to do the right thing for the kids. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Josiah Richards. I live at 199 Fisher Road. I've been a Fitchburg resident for about nine years. Um, I'll be as brief as, as I can. I didn't prepare any notes, but I'd like to speak to the matter on City Hall items uh, 003 one, uh, one, uh, 18 through 0418. Um, the more I'm hearing about the schools, I'm, I don't have any kids. I, I don't plan on having any children, but they're our future. They are the, you know, they're definitely the future of the city. Um, I, I just want to say that I, I don't categorically oppose a brand new city hall on the main street. I think it would be amazing, but I, the more I'm hearing about the schools and the condition that they're in, um, I know we're hearing about the worst case, and I know um, the superintendents and everyone's like in the last week and a half have like done amazing to uh, find new shelter for the uh, students and continue um, their their lessons, but we really need to fast track. I think the uh, the repairs on the schools and I'm. And I'm hoping that if, if you know, I, I know the numbers can work, because I've, I've heard the arguments, I've been to a couple of the hearings, but I think it, there's an image issue going on, and I think if we actually do the city hall and we and don't repair our schools right away, um, we're really hurting, I think, the residents of this city. Um, so, and I, you know, I work at one of those nonprofits on Main Street that doesn't pay taxes, but I, I spend my money on Main Street. I'm down there all the time. Most of you know where I work, but, um, but you know, I think I don't think the city hall is the answer to a main street re revitalization project. It, it, it's it's holistic. We need to focus on. And I know, like um, our Mary Jo Bohard, am I saying that right? <laughs> uh, I'm sure she's been working very uh, diligently with businesses. Um, but I'd like to see that work continue more um, publicly, if possible. Um, and if we can mothball the city hall one more year, one more fiscal year, I know this a sitting building is just. Um, you know, one bad snowstorm away, but okay, but, um, but you know, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> good evening. Hey, good evening again. Uh, again, Sally Craig in uh, 1138 Oak Hill Road. So, um, 2008, we had 70 people sleeping in this building. This building because of the ice storm. We had a boiler fail during that ice storm while we had 70 people here and for, about three weeks, Fitchburg had the largest homeless shelter in the state. And we did that without the Red Cross coming here for about two weeks. I'm sure many of you remember the ice storm, but those are some of the details that go with it. How did we survive that? Smart leadership, smart support from city council, people not sleeping, people at the um, fire department working 24-7. I know that Fitchburg is a place where amazing things happen because I see it every day with our kids. I see it every day with our teachers. When we bring therapy pets in, we see amazing, amazing kinds of learning happen with, um, with all of our kids. And I'm in Crocker, and I'm in our schools that do have some difficulties. But I can tell you this. I can tell everyone this. We have elected people because they are, they are able to handle these problems. We need a city hall. We don't need a mall on Boulder Drive that doesn't have a conference room, that it is very difficult when folks are trying to have meetings and there's uh, information that, you know, really you need space to kind of discuss it. That space does not exist in Boulder Drive. We need a city hall. Our city hall was built by H.M. Francis, the leading architect of Fitchburg. Whether we use that building or a facade or make something else, I know that the wisdom of our elected officials with our citizens will make the right decision. So you know, we'll get it done. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak at this time? Yes. 
Good evening. Uh, my name is Stacy Fenton. I'm at 114 <coughs> Bishop Road. Just a few remarks. Um, speaking to City Hall and sort of the petition, I'm one of the people who petitioned gather signatures. What Fitchburg lacks at this point is a comprehensive capital plan that would map out where we should be and where we want to be 15, 20 years from now. I think ultimately, without coming together as a community and getting some agreement, we are all neighbors. They may be unpleasant conversations, but some will win, some will lose. But if we don't have those conversations, every major decision, every major budget issue is going to be a fight and it's going to be even more divisive. Have, I think we need to have the conversation broadly. You see, this is a very different demographic than showed up at FSU for uh, the presentation of City Hall. As regards the schools, this is a 2016 facilities plan. It enumerates every defect known in the Fitchburg Public School System physical facilities. It has been here since it was commissioned earlier, presented January 2016. Very, very little has been done. Marcus, uh, sorry, a counselor is extremely fond of saying we've spent 12 over $12 million into the school system since 2009. Actually, 4.6 million of that is all the city actually contributed, stated in his email. That averages about $575,000 per year for all of these schools per year. That's what the city can spend. And now I am seeing a desire to spend outright $1 million for City Hall this year, this year on one building. And I'm upset. I do not feel this is the way to go. I feel our schools, yes, we have pulled out some amazing things as a community. We have soldiered on. We are not as broke as we were before. But I think it's time to have the conversation as Fitchburg gets more prosperous where we really want to go. Thank you all for your time and I hope you have a very good evening. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak at this time? Seeing none, we'll uh, return to the City Council agenda. Uh, if there are no objections, I'd now like to hear uh, an oral report from the Appointments Committee, which met earlier this evening at 6.45. For the Appointments Committee this evening was uh, one new appointment for the Conservation Commission, term to expire January 1, 2020, for Mr. Brian Bro, uh, and several reappointments. Uh, the first for the Board of Trustees of the Public Library, term to expire January 1, 2021, for Ms. Mary Rice Hurley and uh, three reappointments for the Conservation Commission. Uh, first term to expire two uh, January 1st, 2021, uh, Mr. Michael Donnelly. Uh, the second for term to expire January 1st, uh, 2021 for Mr. John Kootenan. And uh, the third term to expire January 1st, 2019, Mr. David Streb. Motion to approve the Appointments Committee. Second. I have a motion and second to approve the Appointments Committee. Speaking to the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Motion carries. Now hear a report from the Committee on Records. Councilor Clark, uh, report from the Records Committee. I was unaware that I was the Records Chair. Understood. I believe uh, we also have and it's brand new. To, to hold. To our next meeting. Okay. I have a uh, motion and second uh, to hold uh, the records uh, committee report until the uh, until our next city council meeting. Speaking to the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Uh, communications from His Honor the Mayor. Uh, several letters of appointments this evening. Uh, first, Ms. Uh, Sophia Bogdasarian is a member of the Board of Commissioners Trust Funds for a term to expire January 1st, 2021. Second, uh, Sergeant Gary L. Ouellette to serve as a special police officer for the City of Fitchburg to take effect upon retirement. 
Third officer, Stephen E. McBride, to serve as a special police officer of the city of Fitchburg to take effect upon retirement. Four, officer Matthew L. Burns, to serve as a special police officer for the city of Fitchburg to take effect upon retirement. And fifth, James, uh, officer James Connolly, to serve as a special police officer for the city of Fitchburg to take effect upon retirement. We also have three letters of reappointment. First for uh, Mr. John Bogdasarian as a member of the Board of Health for a term to expire January 1st, 2021. The second for uh, Sheila uh, Vadrevu uh, as a member of the Fitchburg Disability Commission for a term to expire May 1st, 2019. And third for attorney um, Vincent Pusateri II to the position of city solicitor for a term not uh, for a term to expire January 1st, 2019, mayoral uh, appointment, and that does not require uh, council confirmation. That's just simply a uh, communication, councillors. Uh, we'll send all of those to appointments. Uh, next this evening, we also have a uh, communication uh, for the Pension Reserves Investment Management Board, and that'll be referred uh, to the city clerk's office to be filed. All right, next evening we have uh, hearings. First this evening is 30217, uh, Unitil to install a pole number one on Brittany Lane at Rollstone Road, plan number 3447-L uh, to use as a new underground electric riser pole to Brittany Lane Homes. Now declare the hearing open. I'd ask anyone here representing those petitions to please come forward. Good evening, sir. If you could please state your name and address for the record. I appreciate it. Hi, I'm Jim D. with Unitil. Great. And I guess this goes along, this first one goes along with a poll that we wanted to relocate, uh, poll number 27 on Rollstone Road at Brittany Lane. Okay. And I guess that poll, that relocated poll petition had been passed over to, uh, I guess, the Department of Public Works. So that's not on here tonight, but that poll number 27 gets hit two or three <coughs> times a year. Um, so we wanted to move that across the street. So I guess this one here depends on if that poll's moved across the street, now we need a, a poll on the other side of the street further back off the road on Brittany Lane uh, for the rise of poll to serve Brittany Lane Underground. Um, so, depending on that poll on Rosso Road uh, getting approved. Um, Sir, so uh, if I understand correctly, if we were to pass this this evening, you'd be waiting for that next, uh, for action on that next right, um, right. petition before you'd move forward with any of the, the work. That's correct. correct. Okay. Uh, questions from councilors? Uh, Councilor Caddy? Is this an urgent matter on your part? Does it need to be done right away? Can you do it right away? Oh, yeah. Well, um, actually, we probably wouldn't be doing that Brittany Lane underground riser pole t probably till spring. Yeah. So you'd be leaving the pole that's there until the spring? Um, we'd probably move, put the pole across the street, move all the wires across the street, and just run a, a separate line across to that pole. R right away? <coughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. President, I was thinking we could pull it out of committee if if, uh, if that's the council's wishes. It's not yet in committee. Um, I mean, we could do oh, it part of it. Yeah. Okay. I don't have the petition number. But I don't, yeah. in, unless they can do the project, there would be no reason to pull it out of committee. But if they can, mm -hmm. we, we have the option of pulling out of committee. Hey, council, I, I don't even have the petition number on us this evening, and it doesn't sound like there's a real sense of urgency here. Um, be amenable to it to it yeah being, we'd like to the get it process. done i mean it would have been nice if we had done this months ago when the weather was better yeah. but that pole does get hit two or three times a, a winter <laughs> so right now it's braced with a cross arm um we can move the pole across the street and and uh you know perhaps we could do that underground you know this this winter you know if it warms up a little bit um but, uh, yeah, I don't have an answer for you as far as when we can do it. You know, it might be a month. Um. <coughs> 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 okay. Understood. Yeah. Um, Mr. 
present. There'll be there'll be a, a meeting in two weeks, <coughs> so it, yes. four weeks at the most we could get it back to the council. Right. Okay. For uh, this poll here, mm -hmm. what about the DPW? It's the DPW committee. Oh, that. Oh, okay. so they'll be meeting in two weeks. Oh, okay. They it don't come. It don't come at the next council right. meeting. Right. Councilor Caddy, all set? Yeah. Okay. Councilor Di Natale. This is the location where there's a lot of large boulders in the, on the corner. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, this is the, the, the Hagerty property uh, where there's been 30 accidents there in the last few years. So um, that pole, I think, has been hit more than two or three times. Oh, yeah. Well, so this two is or a long time year it gets hit. This is yeah. a long time yeah. coming, and I know the resident who lives right on that corner will yeah. be thrilled that that pole is going to be moving right. um, but if you go to that property you, as you see there are like it looks like a fortress there's there's yeah. boulders six or eight feet high in front right. of a property oh yeah serve as a barrier for cars going on her lot yeah so, but that's dangerous too um, it should have a guardrail so it steers cars we've we've tried to do a guardrail and yeah. um the thought there is it, it's yeah. going to also get damaged multiple times so it's the rocks are there because yeah they're easier to not have damaged um, right yeah but that was dangerous. the that was the thought process from the engineering group uh thank you councillor boschman you got a question um my question to you is i know what uh, councillor dean Italy is saying you're talking about the pole across the street from Brittany lane my question to you pole number 28 yep you're talking about approximately according to your chart you're, you're 100 you're approximately 150 feet away from the new location why can't we go on the ground on that and then come back up with the pole right there and then go to whatever 26 with the uh, with a pole right there instead of bringing the wire across the street 28 you bring the wire underground put it in a box and bring it back up and go to 26 pulling over to 26 heading down to us uh franklin road <clears throat> i don't know east that was or not right you understand what i'm saying yeah, I, I think I do. Um, I guess it, it's possible that you might go from 27 across the road. Underground? Yeah. Underground. Underground. I mean, I don't know. Why can't we do that? Money. you got to cut up the road. It, it's a lot more expensive to do that when, you know, the pole 27 has to be moved regardless. So all we're really doing is running a, putting another pole on Brittany Lane away from you know yeah i see what you're putting lane. in the yeah right I, I understand what you're putting in the pole right well i was just me i'm not a i'm not a fan of poles <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. face the facts yeah, it's a lot more expensive many a times yeah a lot more expensive digging up the road and putting conduit and cable and all that stuff then. yeah but then you're all done with it you never have to worry about it till it, till it rots out i mean it, you never have to be bothered with it yeah usually we don't have to worry about the poles either you know if they're out of the way of traffic you know so. all right get as far as i get with this councillor squalia yeah um the plan that i have it shows a relocation of pole 27 across the street and an additional pole uh adjacent is is that i'm reading that correctly and you're saying that you have a, a an additional petition that amends this in some way the uh, poll 20, the poll number one on Brittany Lane, is that what you're talking about? That's that's the new poll? That, that poll 27 is being moved across the street? Yeah, that poll 27, I guess that's the one that we were originally going to petition for. It went to the DPW to look at it, I guess, um, because it's a relocation, not a new poll. That oh, poll so the relocation is not included in your petition? That's what you're saying? Right, yeah, right. Okay. I mean, it originally was when I sent it to Fitchburg. Uh, it was originally, you know, part of the petition, but like I said, it went to DPW to decide. Relocations don't require a, a public relocation, hearing, right? right? So right. it gets simply sent to committee uh, to be vetted uh, for their the committee's recommendation. Right. And but so the relocation of poll 27 hasn't been vetted by the Public Works Committee at this time. Correct. Okay. Right. Yeah. Any further questions from counselors? I'd ask if there's anyone here in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of the petition. Is there anyone here who wishes to speak in opposition to the petition? If all have been heard. I declare the hearing closed. Motion, to, motion to hold 302. Granted. I was going to motion to hold to uh, take the motion. 
yeah, to the DPW yeah. committee report. So you're you're, pen, you're pending a DPW report. Right. Council, you have the first motion, so are you amenable to? Okay. I have a motion and second to hold three o two seventeen. Speaking to the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. It is held. Uh, pending a report from the Public Works Committee. So you can just stay there. We've got the next two uh, <laughs> for you. Uh, 30317, uh, Unitil to install one new uh, mid span pole number 29 A, approximately 128 um, feet between pole uh, number 29 and pole number 30 across from Anita Drive, plan number 3446-L. This is a long span and we need to raise the height of the wires. Now declare the hearing open. Yeah, on this uh, petition, there's the span, it's a long span, um, 256 yeah. feet. The cable, the, there's a bank in there, so the cable is probably like 10 feet off of the uh, ground uh, communications cable not the electric so while I was doing this Brittany Lane uh, petition I figured I'd petition to get a pole put in there to raise those communication cables up at the same time um, as that so basically just to get the wires up a little higher because uh, they're low in that area for the because of the long span okay. Councilor Dina Taylor this is a, this is a Proactive safety precaution. Right. Usually the wires are a lot higher than that. So right. this would warrant. Yeah, usually raising. the span's a little shorter, but this is yeah, 256 well, feet. So thank you for the Trying proactive to. proactiveness of, of this. Thank you. Any further questions from counselors? Is there anyone here wishing to speak uh, in favor of the petition? Anyone here wishing to speak in opposition to the petition? All have been heard. Declare the hearing closed. The matter is before you. 30317 be granted. Second. I have a motion and second to grant 30317. Speaking to the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Motion carries. 30417, Unitil to install one uh, new guide wire stub pole number 49 1, approximately 230 feet north of Abbott Ave. Uh, needed to support poll number 49 from leaning towards house at 1140 Water Street. Now declare the hearing open. Yeah, this is a, a situation where there's no problem going on now, but we don't want to have a problem in the future if, if they were to do any work on that house. Because uh, right now the pole is leaning towards a house with three phase, and uh, <coughs> we don't want to just go lean in anymore, so we want to put a pole across the street to guide that pole um, away from the house so it doesn't lean any further towards the house. So, Councilor Dean Natale. Anything you can do about the pole that's leaning? The pole that's leaning? Yes. Yeah, that guy wire stub pole will pull that. Pull it we'll, back. Yeah, we'll straighten it up okay. and that'll hold that pole in place. Yeah, so it's not, because it's a corner there and it's just, the wires are pulling them you know, towards sounds like another proactive our, approach, yeah, which right, is good. We're to trying see. to straighten, okay. straighten poles and Thank you. clean things up. Councilor Boschman, I call proactive approach on this one here, particularly when we were ramping Water Street. Why didn't we go underground on this one here to, to across to one one five four on what according to your map instead of having a wire going two hundred thirty feet down River Street, Water Street, a guy wire. I mean, that's the only pole on that on that side of the road that you're going to put a guy wire over here and all we had to do go on the ground for the wire that's going over route, route 12 on Water Street on Abbott Ave on the corner of Abbott Ave and Water where the pole show is here. Yep, I According see. to your map. Yep. May I ask that question? Um, I don't understand it. But my, my question is we're putting this guy wire in right. to hold a pole. Right. The whole pole is leaning this way according to your diagram here. Right. It's leaning towards uh, Water Street. And all I'm asking is why we didn't go, when we're digging up the road on Water Street, take that line out of there and go underground to the next pole across the street from Water Street, according to your print. Instead of putting a guy wire. I'm not, explain, I'm not a fan of wires. I think it takes the beauty out of a neighborhood. 
And, and the wires are no longer getting smaller. They're getting bigger. Look around you. They almost look like Venetian blinds. So I'm not a fan of wires. And, and the only thing I'm saying is I don't understand why we didn't go on the ground right here for this one last pole to go across the street from Water Street. That's the pole you're leaning. That's the pole that's leaning towards Water Street. The Am I right or wrong? Pole 49 is leaning towards the uh, towards the field or that house. 49 is down here, but you get the, yeah. my my thing says, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, so the, the support wire is right here, right? No, this is the pole that the support wire will run to. Oh, I thought it was here. So it's no, that's just a measurement. Oh, all right. Sorry about this. Yep, you had me confused. Yeah. All right, I thought that was the pole right here. No, nope. wire pole support right here. No. All right, sorry about that. My mistake. Councilor Squalia. Just to clarify my understanding, there's a new pole 49-1 that's going across the street from 49, and right. the guy wire is going across Water Street to right. support that pole, which is leaning right. towards the house. Right. So it's going to support it across the street. Right. Okay. Because of the the way the uh, the corner. Is you can't. It's not going in the direction where we can put a guy anchor uh, or guy wire, you know, towards the house. It's going the other way. So you have to go across the street, put a pole, and run a guy wire across the street. But that's all that's going to be on it. It's just going to be a guy wire, not electric wires, communication wires, or anything like that. Right. It's just a structural support pole. Right. So anyone here wishing to speak uh, in favor of the petition? Is there anyone here wishing to speak in opposition to the petition? If all have been heard, I declare the hearing closed. The matter is now before the council. I have a motion and second uh, to grant 30417. Speaking to the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It's unanimous. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Orders finance. <laughs> I have, a, I have a motion and second to send 03 and 0418 uh, to the Council of the Whole Committee meeting uh, scheduled for this Thursday. Speaking to the motion, Councilor Squalia. I'd like a, a clarification from the Chair if there will be a public forum allowed at the Council of the Whole meeting uh, this Thursday. I, yes, I plan to hold a public forum at that Council of the Whole Committee meeting. Thank you. Speaking to the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. 00518 and 00618 be sent to finance committee. Second. I have a motion and second to send 005 and 00618 to the finance committee uh, meeting scheduled for next Tuesday. Speaking to the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Motion carries. 32117, an ordinance, two hour parking. Spaces shall be installed at the, uh, at the corner from 1 Lunenburg Street to 23 Lunenburg Street by amending the section 169-26 titled Time Limit Parking as outlined in the enclosed ordinance. Reference petition 10217, final reading. Group 32117 be sent to its third and final reading, ordained, enrolled, and advertised. Okay. I have a motion and second to send 32117 to its third and final reading, enrolled, ordained, and advertised. Speaking to the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. One. One in opposition. Councilor Bosch. Mm -hmm. Petition 00718 through 00918. Second. I have a motion and do I have a second? Second. I have motion and second to send 0, uh, 07 up to and including 00918 to their respective committees. Speaking to the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Motion carries. I have a motion and second to adjourn. Speaking to the motion, um, Councilor Gina Talley. Uh, forgive me, Mr. President, if this is out of, out of order, but um, I just wanted to take this opportunity. There has been a significant number, as we are all made aware of, of major delays on trash and recycling pickup. And my email and phone has rung off the hook for three weeks now. People are very understanding of the holidays and the storms. I know waste managers had significant truck breakdowns. I myself saw a truck being towed, a recycling waste manager truck being towed on Electric Ave four days ago. So I don't know what's going on. It's been the worst that I've seen in 10 years on this council. Um, we 
advertise the holiday delay through the app and through the website and then there's a two-day delay because of the storm people are following those delays and there are people today still telling me it's been almost two weeks they still haven't gotten their trash picked up now I know the Board of Health has been fielding calls ad nauseum every minute of the day I don't know what's going on mr. mr. Curry but on behalf of those residents I understand what they're talking about and I'm sure you do this is not acceptable for a company that we pay millions of dollars to every year. I mean, the residents call, your employees quickly send the addresses, days and days go by, they're still not picked up. So I don't know what to tell these residents because it's, I can't really do much short of getting in one of those trucks and driving to the house and picking it up myself. I mean, I know you're aware of it, but I just wanted to bring this up because I don't know what else to do. Um, there are people who called me today. It's been it's been almost two weeks. I don't know what to tell them because they report it. They report it. So do I. It's still not being picked up. So I don't know what's going on with your communications with waste management. But I just wanted to voice my displeasure with them. I understand there are problems, but two weeks, Thank you. six seven days that's a long time. Thank so you I don't know what's going time. on. Any other announcements at this time? I'd just like to um, make one announcement regarding Crocker Elementary School. I attended the Crocker Elementary PTO meeting just before the City Council meeting, and we were briefed by the principal, Adam Renda, um, according to what's going on and how the students are doing at St. Anthony's and Passio's in Lunenburg. And the staff is doing an amazing job from their reports. The first day, they went through a lot of uh, updating and discussing what was going on, and the second day, which is today, they are back to their curriculum. They said they have uh, a lot of donations from area, um, like the the Lunenburg Lions donated a gift card to every single teacher. The Lemonster, they borrowed their curriculum from Northwest, and they're also, they downloaded the other curriculum, so they have their, all the, <laughs> the materials that they need for teaching. The, um, the classrooms are good. They have, they have heat. They have water. They <clears throat> me mentioned some needs, um, but they're going to update their needs and re request them publicly as they know them. But some specific needs uh, were um, socks and underwear from the nurse and, um, you know, little Dixie cups to the nurse, those kinds of things, um, and, li and extra clothes for the nurse's station. They anticipate that... Um, you know, they're hoping that insurance will cover whatever damage they have to the classrooms. And that's uh, the update that I heard from Crocker PTO. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, at this time, this is somewhat unconventional, but I think this is uh, particularly relevant given uh, the nature of the issues uh, just brought forth by, by Councilor Jean Natalia that I think many of us have been experiencing. Um, we have uh, uh, Mr. Curry joining us here from the Board of Health. Mr. Curry. I have been working quite feverishly with uh, waste management uh, staff for several days, or over a week now. Uh, we do have daily conference calls. I do report the uh, missed collections uh, that are reported through C Click Fix, Recollect, and phone calls and office. Um, I can tell you that as of this week, uh, regular trash collection is on schedule. Now, the previous week, I understand that there has been some uh, partial collections on streets and some streets that are, are not collected. I am aware of them. Um, if folks would like to, to voice their um, um, miscollection, please do so by using C-Click Fix. Uh, it, it's a little bit more manageable for my office. Uh, basically, all you have to do is sign up for C-Click Fix. Uh, within a couple of days, that C-Click Fix report from residents will go directly to Waste Management Dispatch. So we will be notified of the miss, but it will also be go directly to uh, Waste Management dis Dispatch. I am in the process uh, of allowing those residents that have a buildup, uh, as long as they have a reasonable week, week or two, uh, collection of trash and recycling I have been issuing free passes to landfill if that's uh, if, if folks are interested in utilizing that uh, service they can certainly uh, touch base with my office and we will arrange your uh, uh, access to the landfill in a permit uh, we do have to regulate that um, very closely however because there is a budget related to that item so Please understand that I can't allow you to empty your basement into uh, into the landfill uh, 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 during the process. I, I ask for respect at, uh, at, on, on that item. Um, 
Are there any other questions that I, am I, am I, am I giving some, some? And Mr. Curry, if you so wish to, if there's a, if there's a more substantial update as well on Thursday or be it uh, next Tuesday uh, right. for finance committee, uh, whether it's myself or, or uh, Chairman Di Natale, we'd be happy to read those communications as well, just to keep people informed uh, and up to date, uh, up to the date, um, wherever that information is available. In addition to, I'm glad I asked the question. In addition to, uh, folks that had missed recycling last week, that are a blue collection week or a, a B week, uh, we will allow you to put that recycling out next week on your regu regular schedule. Please put your overflow recycling into a box. It, I will assure you that it will be re, re, uh, collected, but make sure it is contained in case we do have some uh, windy, stormy days during that process. So if, if we could, you know, within reason, uh, put it out at curbside on your regular day next week only for that last week collection for those um, folks that were missed we will uh, allow collection of those overflow items or blue lid. within reason question or blue lid blue week only yes uh, question council green yes can you just remind folks again when um, curbside tree christmas tree curbside tree collection is actually this week on your regular collection day thank you councilor green um, to their to the best of my knowledge they are up to date although i have received a couple of miscollections here and there that, that that's not uncommon usually trees are buried behind uh, various items snow banks uh, and while i'm on the snow bank issue if i could uh, ask residents to be sure that your <coughs> barrel is accessible to the street uh, our automated system cannot reach across large snow banks and it cannot dig out um, carts that are buried in snow banks so make the cart accessible to the street as possible I understand there is uh, uh, snow barricades but please make sure there's no cars parked in it or large snow banks uh, that we uh, the automated system needs to reach over to to retrieve these barrels and thank you for the opportunity to give this get this information out there I will be updating as uh, as you mentioned, as possible, and I will be utilizing the uh, <clears throat> the media sources that are are such as Recollect. I also, uh, while I'm at it, uh, would like to encourage residents to utilize CCLIX Fix as well as Recollect. It is a uh, a free trash app you can put on your smartphone. You do not need a smartphone to have it. It can be uh, notifications can be sent to a regular landline. I do encourage uh, folks to sign up for that. It is free. It's a pretty easy process, and it, it allows you to access to get information from the city regarding trash collection. Director Curry, thank, thank you, you for, uh, for all the efforts by you and your staff. I know it's been trying, and uh, hopefully waste management can get their act together and, and uh, get all the trash collected out there. I have a motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. We're adjourned. Thanks, councilors. One second. Mm -hmm.